Fabulous. Well, <laughs> despite some technical difficulties, <laughs> I'm Dr. Jordan Leisure. I'm the owner and physician of North Shore Proactive Health, a state-of-the-art wellness clinic in the northern Chicago suburbs, part-time gamer, or I should at least be with this. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> and my good friend, Mara. Mara, tell everyone who you are, how fabulous you are, and oh, let's get started that way. Hi, everyone. Mara Heikman. Um, I'm with Discover Your Potential. I'm a certified life coach. I've been kind of doing it my whole life, but certified the last several years, <laughs> and um, enjoying this time right now for that. <laughs> I, li I like that. Always, always been, but just recently certified. <laughs> exactly. Not recently, but still always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's true. Like, I feel like you have, when you know, you know, and if you yeah. have a gift and you share, it doesn't matter, you know, and I say that being a physician and having how many years of school and but knowing what not, but yes, but you know, and you have gifts and you share your talents accordingly. So I have had the pleasure of working with you for what, maybe a little over a year now. And yeah, yeah. Um, the information, I say this at almost all of my videos that people should have a pad of paper and a pen. And I'm going to reiterate it right now because mm -hmm. the things that Mara says, <laughs> It is, it's on the one hand, very simple and implementable. On the other hand, it's going to blow your mind. So I would suggest that literally you jot down some of what she has to share because it's terrific. Thank you. Yeah, I think, um, Mara, whatever, obviously, you know, whatever you feel would be most impactful for people right now is where we should start. But what I really liked were some of the levels that we discussed and- yeah and you know, hierarchy of needs and things like that. So I would just Absolutely. say, hop, oh, jump thank in. You. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. I, um, I think that the quarantine has come differently to different people at different times. Um, I think that, you know, some people's lives changed dramatically in a day and others people's ca came to it differently. And I think it's really, um, for me, been a big pause, like a big, hey, we need to stop for a minute and really take a look at ourselves. And I feel <laughs> like that's been probably the most important part for me for these last couple of months. Um, and in helping my clients gain some self-awareness about what things they enjoy, what things they really enjoy, what their real values are and what is in alignment with them and um, what they like from pre all of this and what they're hoping to bring post all of this. And um, it's been interesting to kind of just watch us all kind of take a journey through this. So, yeah. Um, specific questions, Jordan, as far as... Um, when you talked about the energy levels, I think that um, the energy levels that I've talked about with you are different than what I'm going to mention right now, but we have social energy levels that we need to meet. We have mental energy levels. We need to challenge ourselves. We need to grow. We're social beings. Um, and I feel like it's really important to make sure that we're filling all of our different buckets. Um, you know, are we are we fueling our bodies properly? Are we um, listening to what we need to have fun throughout the day? Are we tapping into that playful side of us? Um, are we making sure we're socializing? Are we making sure we're challenging our minds? All of those different things, so important. Have you so. seen, I know with us, my biggest concern, and I, I feel like, as many do, I think that energy levels and you and I've talked about yes. this and my motivation and everything will yes. have and flow. Um, my biggest concerns have always been Parker's mental health because being three and his social connections, yes. you know, um, have always sort of worried me right? and figuring out how to fulfill that for him. So I think a lot of us are managing those levels personally Absolutely. and then for others as well. Absolutely. And in the end, and we talk about this all the time, but truly, if you're not taking care of yourself, you cannot take care of a three-year-old. You just can't. And so it really is stepping back and, and what do I need so that I'm my best self, 
so that when I am spending my energy here or my time here, that I really am fully present in those moments and really able to give all of myself to each experience. Yeah. Have you I, seen, I, what have you seen in your clients as far as like big, big priorities right now? Are there, are there certain Yes. Um, I consistencies. Think that, <laughs> well, I think at the beginning, and I think that you and I talked about this at one point, I think there was some grief and everyone's grief was a little bit different, but there were a lot of, wait a minute, what? I'm, I, I'm not going to have this event or wait a minute, I'm not going to get to go here. And there was a little bit of like, wait, I don't really understand what's going on. And I think just an ability to be validated on that and to really settle into that I think so much of us, like when you talked about the ebb and flow, we kind of sometimes try to dig our heels in and resist what is. Guess what? This is our reality. You can, you can do whatever you want. You can try whatever you want. But this is our reality. And so the only person that you can really focus on during that time and live with intention and live consciously is yourself. And so I think what I've noticed once my clients got back, passed through some of that grief, it was also like, okay, well now what? Now what do I do? And, and a lot of trying to figure out how to plan for the future. And what I'm realizing is I think a lot of people have now settled into, okay, we, we can't necessarily plan for the future. We can try. There are lots of different things that we can do right now to prepare ourselves as much as possible, but we cannot anticipate the future. Right. And so it's really a time to be still with, okay, I'm here and I, I love a lot of these things. I, I want to go there, but I, I can only go so far. So I have today. Mm -hmm. And so really then being accountable to how they want to feel each day, how they want to feel each week. I have a couple of clients that see me for like one full session a month but they do like a check-in every week, just even a 10 or 15 minute check-in. And it really helps you set into, okay, now where am I going? Or where did I not get yet and why? And what, and let's, do I really want it? How important is it to me? How, how can I make it important? So. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's tremendous. And I have noticed myself, you know, when this all started and there were a few uh, memes, I don't know if they're meme, whatever they're called, yes, yes, yes. Going, going around and yes. saying like, you know, if, with all this time, if you don't write your book and you don't start yeah. your business and you don't yeah. do this, then it wasn't a priority. Right. And it, it didn't take long. It was probably like 48 hours. And they mm -hmm. started taking that same meme uh -huh. and then posting underneath it like, well, maybe you're a mom and now you're homeschooling and maybe you don't know what you, you know, maybe you're grieving and you're just trying to survive the day. And I was like, right. uh, that I resonate with that as well because it Absolutely. is crazy town. Absolutely. And that's exactly it is the ebb and flow literally can come in a, in a matter of hours. It can come in a matter of minutes. Um, so it really is trying to, okay, so this is where I am right now. What, what do I feel like I need? Maybe I feel like I need to sit and read a book. You know, um, I think that's, um, that's been another thing that's been really neat to see in people and including myself is the ability to embrace stillness which is not something that would resonate with me. Even when I was like in third grade, when we were watching TV, I had a latch hook rug. I had cross stitching. I did not sit still. <laughs> and even now I've got my knitting and I've got my puzzles. But I, I was telling someone the other day, I walked into my daughter's room and she's 19 and she was just sitting there, just sitting there. And I go, what are you doing? And she goes, just sitting here. And I was like, what? What's oh, wrong? <laughs> and she said, you know, mom, that's the problem with your generation. She said this lovingly. <laughs> you know, she goes, but you feel like you always have to be productive. You feel like you have to be busy. And I think that it's really, uh, I can look back and say, I was meditating. I was doing yoga. I was taking care of myself. But it was also on the list of things to do with all the 25 other million things I do during a day or a week. Right. And to like actually sit and allow my body to sit. I mean, that's when they talk about our, 
creativity, which is an other enormous thing I've seen with my clients right now, um, is guitar and music and songwriting and journal writing and really just finding a way to express themselves. Yeah, for us, I would say we're being creative, but it's more in a professional manner and, and figuring out truly, you know, number one, like, how do we survive? How do we navigate this? And then number two, what part of what I'm doing do I like? You know, like those circles, like this yes. brings me money, this I enjoy. Yes. I don't, I don't remember what the third one is. but Right, right. right. But, but when you find ways to make sure you're filling all those different areas, then you might find where else you want to spend them. And, and Jordan, I have to say, people like you who have young children at home, I, I have probably said every single day of quarantine. I mean, I, I honestly don't think there's been a day that I haven't said, I am so glad that my kids are 19 and 17. Like I, what, where people are, and I do, I believe in this is that, I, you know, we've all, I think saw that article about we're all in the same storm, but we're not necessarily in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And I know what's in my boat and I know what keeps my boat afloat. And I know what keeps, I know what sinks my boat a little. I know what upsets my boat. I know what rocks it. And it's my job to figure out who I want in my boat, what right. I do want in my boat. But I am very aware that we really are all in our own place with this. And it's really being compassionate to ourselves wherever we are in the process. Um, and believe me, being home with young kids and working and managing a business and all of those things, that's, wow, forget the photo albums and the clean laundry. I just, there's only so many things that can happen in it. Right, right. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, I have, you know, I started this group, I think, thinking that this would be a couple week um, commitment. Like, <laughs> and it's turned and look, but looking back, you know, it's turned into literally I've done a video a day since this started. So what has this been like two months now? Congratulations. Well, thank you. you. To celebrate that. Well, I did. So I didn't, um, it, it's very, and you and I've talked about this before. It's very rare that I sit back and I reflect and I, cause I'm always going, there's something right. else I want to do. I have something else I want to accomplish. Right. But I was in the car and I was like, you know what? My mother's been telling me for, I've been in practice 14 years. My mother's essentially been telling me for 14 years, I need to write a book. Uh -huh. um, she's been telling me that I should be doing, and again, even Facebook was like in its infancy. Right, right, But right. But I should be doing, you know, like videos. I should be right. doing more and I haven't. Right. And I was like, you know, I think two years ago I said, I'll make a commitment and I'll do a video a week. Well, that right. like, right dribbled off. Right, right. I and now it. in recognizing that we've done a video a day for two months, I'm like, that's essentially would have been a year of content had I done a video oh a week. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> oh, look at you. <laughs> but seriously, I do. I actually think that exactly what you're doing is you're stopping and you're, pat you're actually patting yourself on the back. We mm -hmm. have to celebrate these things. We I am so grateful for so many of the things and it's the, those little things and big things and being able to acknowledge that in ourselves. It's huge. Yeah. Good for you. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, at least what I've seen from people and what I hope that people get out of this is the recognition that they can change habits and they can, you know, pivot it doesn't necessarily need to be a left-hand turn no but if you modify expectations or you modify chain and obviously that's you know a lot where you come in is helping yeah. people you know it's easy for me to see it but helping to to get there i think yeah. is where your guidance is is most useful yeah definitely definitely it is it's really um i just think there's something very profound about taking a little time for yourself and setting yourself up for as much success as possible. And the only person that you really want to be accountable in the end to is yourself. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Is there something that, uh, that everybody that's watching, is there something that they could start, like, where do they start? Where do they start to implement? Is it, you know, acknowledgement? Is it, I you know, the first thing uh, well, there's a lot of first things. There's a lot of ways you can do it. There's no, there's really, there's no, okay, this is the only way. But I think one of the biggest things is to look at your values. Um, really sit down and kind of um, 
look at what's really important to you, what gives you joy. Um, there are all sorts of exercises that you can do online. I do exercises with people. There's a website called like viacharacter.com. Maybe we'll um, tag it in the feed, but like it's a, um, it just is like 70 questions for free and it takes you maybe 20 minutes to answer and you get some feedback on what's important to you. But I think if you know that freedom and flexibility and humor and um, different things are important to you, you're more likely to, if you first of all, tie some of your goals to those things, achieve them. But you're also, if you find yourself not achieving something or not doing something, it's probably out of alignment with what your real value is. There's probably some inner conflict going on. And um, I think that it's really important to understand yourself, you know? And so the more, I think that's one thing that's been really helpful. I think, um, I think really listening to what your different buckets are, really figuring out um, what's important to you. Um, how, how much, how much is the mom bucket? How much is the work bucket? How much is the socialization bucket? If I, I've told people this many times, if you had told me three months ago, okay, so we're going to be in quarantine and you're not going to get to leave your house. And when you go out and you're not going to be, I would have been like, I'm going to go crazy. You know, I really would have thought that I wouldn't be able to do it or that it would be really difficult. Some of me has enjoyed this so much and been able to really look at what I'm grateful for. So I think that those grateful, finding the little things, the little, little things that are so, because guess what? People don't have the ability to pay for their water right now. People don't have internet. There are people who are really struggling. And so I also find giving of ourselves, wherever it is that we can, like Jordan, you're doing this. This is something that you can give people. Um, I have a friend who's calling um, elderly people at the synagogue who live alone and just checking in with them just once a week, 10, 15 minutes. Do you know how amazing and how that's giving her so many things too? So I think that finding different things to fill your different buckets and making sure you're staying well balanced during this is a really great thing. I like that. Yeah, we, I think literally the, week that things closed down, I took my staff and we volunteer, you know, Jade is on the board of directors for Twice as Nice Mother and Child, oh, right, which is right. that same organization that we donated when we did the antibody testing that we donated uh -huh, um, uh -huh. my fees to. And I had took the, I took the staff and for us, it was literally meant to be just like a, a team building thing. Right, right. And we do them periodically and sometimes they include, you know, wine and who knows what. And sometimes right. it's for the, for the greater good. And I didn't realize that half the staff has continued even through quarantine going there and volunteer, like it makes me tear up, like going there and continue right. to volunteer. And, right. and there is so much that we can do. There are those of us that are, you know, overwhelmed with kids and childcare. And there are other people that maybe have a little bit of time. Right. And it does, it feels, you know, it, it is so empowering to give no matter what it is that you're able to give. You know, in the beginning, I was like, you need to be checking on people. So text your friends, see if, right. you know, those right. of us that are entrepreneurs, we are not okay. Right. <laughs> right. We are I, not. No, mission. things are not, not good. <laughs> and, um, and I, you know, like I can laugh about it, but for, for a lot of people, like those that I know in the hospitality industry, I have friends that own three restaurants, like three, right. like what in the world? Right. And it doesn't matter. I was, was like replaying this, you know, because right. for some people they were given seed money. They have like investors right. that have invested right. it's not necessarily right. straight out of their pocket, but what does that do to you internally? When, when you have this mission to not only serve c people in, in both aspects, but to right. serve those that have financially backed you. And now it's like the world has shut down. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of, I think, intrinsic challenges so that if you're able to give, yes. there's always somebody that is, is needing and, to receive. And there's so many different ways that we all give. Some of us give of our time. Some of us give of our finances, our emotional energy. There's so many different ways, but there is so much you receive from that. And it's really important. And 
And it's kind of a reminder, we're all connected. Mm -hmm. We're all, guess what? Everyone in the world, that's what a pandemic is, is affected by this right now in some way or another. Where it, they're aff affected is different. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It is definitely, definitely an yeah. interesting time. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So your tools that have, that I've been able to implement that others should be implementing, mm -hmm. um, is there, what is the best way for them to go about, for individuals that to go about starting with you or setting up an appointment? Like what would things look like? Um, so I usually, for everyone, I do a 30 minute, just a consult that's free. Just, I feel awesome. like it's really important to see if we're a good match. I kind of, I shouldn't say it, but I kind of believe everyone needs a coach, but I definitely don't think I'm the right coach for everyone. And I think that that's super important to kind of find out for, for both of us to see what a working relationship is. After that, I have an assessment that I have people do at home, online. It takes about 20, 25 minutes. It's kind of a nice shortcut to kind of um, find a good basic um language for us to talk about where you are with different things and really un have an understanding of how you're coming into this. And, and then after that, sessions are different for everyone. Everyone needs different things. I am not a, everyone has to come once a week. Everyone comes once a month. I, I will probably make some recommendations based on when I first talk with someone, but everyone's different. I am really loving, um, being able to, we've, I've always used Zoom, but now everyone's kind of comfortable with it. Not everyone, right. but most people are comfortable with it. And so that's really helped. Um, the phone is also a really nice tool, just talking on the phone, because there's something about being able, you're almost like really talking to yourself and really sorting your own things. So that's um, a lot of fun too. So yeah, we, I, I work with people and I'm flexible on how I do, do it. Do you find that the communication is different if someone doesn't necessarily have to see you? Yes. What, I, what comes out is a little bit different? So number one, I have to listen much more intently. I have to be so, there's no other cues about this person. <laughs> right. So are they about to cry? Are they angry? Are they, what's the next right question or good question for me to ask? So I listen so much more intently. I feel like, you know, sometimes I'm in here, I'm flip, you know, my hair, you know what I mean? Like, right. So, um, and not really, but still it's, it's less, it forces me to really stay present. And I think for them, it's a little bit of a barrier. Like, um, to allow their vulnerable wall to come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. they, there's, there's not someone looking at them and watching them and they can really like be still with themselves. Um, so yeah, I, I do a lot of coaching over the phone and love it. Yeah, that's love awesome. It. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, well, I am going to put um, your links in there and then Sounds great. text me that, um, that via, via yeah. character, I will. Yeah. And I will, I will add that as well impressive with your beginning of this. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate that. <laughs> so to everyone that, that missed out, we tried Zoom, we tried Facebook. So this was like take number three. And I was, I was very calm, cool, and collected. And that should be a testimonial to uh, Mara's experience Aww. with me and being able to... <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> Help me manage in times of stress. And, exactly. Yeah, I that I was it. awesome. Thank you, Dr. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I love you and, and love I appreciate you everything you do. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye.